Okay, um, so now we're going to explain uh, all the aspects of the construct window. We're going to start in the bottom left-hand corner with, uh, basically it's the load section, so you can see uh, how much of the, the drums have been loaded into each particular drum in the, in the graphic. So you can see down here, it's, it's broken up into, let's just load a drum actually in right now, so just put another kick drum in. We're going to load in the uh, uh, GMS 14 by 24. And so you can see right now in the, in the bottom corner, it says loading samples. Um, and then, Matisse, why don't you explain to him like how the cache works in 16-bit? Yeah, 16-bit yeah. is obviously putting the sample in the 16-bit mode uh, instead of 24. So it makes them smaller. It makes it smaller, so, so it I can do it. Uh, I mean, if I do that, it, it says 376 megabytes of RAM instead of 594. Is there a noticeable sound quality difference? Yeah, if you start, of course, if you start processing, it's going to be a bit, I mean, it's 16 bits, so right. you have a lower, you know. Right. It doesn't have the dynamic range that 24 exactly. okay. does, but again, it loads quicker. Sounds and you're good. Just trying to Perfect get it going to work fast. with, because yep. you can actually use 16 bit to work with. Can you then and, reconvert and then, to 24? Yeah. yeah. And then you, you just can, hit that button. Great. And it changes all the sound. And you can do that globally and, as well. And there is another thing. That you, is global. Great. And there's another thing you can do is that you can work in 16-bit mode and then you can do something that we're going to go through later, which is called bouncing. And you can select to bounce in 24. So mm -hmm. you can actually run this on a, you know... For speed and convenience yeah. in 16. Right. And especially if you're running multiple uh, programs, because some guys like to have two different kind of drum kits going simultaneously. So mm -hmm. that'll keep it smaller in your RAM and how it's accessing the computer. Okay. Yeah. And then also the... Uh, and then if you're, ca if you're cached, right? If you're cached, yeah. If I, if I uh, select the cache mode mm -hmm. and I run like a MIDI loop, for example, the MIDI loop is going to actually, the, the sample is just going to load whatever the MIDI loop is playing. Mm -hmm. so, I see. So you can quickly change to a, a different kit and have a MIDI loop playing. If you cast mode, it's going to just load whatever it's needed right. for that. So it's, it's a good way to audition fast right. different kits and stuff. It ob obviously, it takes some time to load, but it, it reduces time. And also, of course, memory. You can take a huge kit with, that would take like three gigs of RAM right. and use cache mode throughout the whole song, and it's just going to load the actual samples that needs. Right. It that you're accessing from the program. Right. So yeah. it's going to use cool. like 600 megs of RAM right. instead of 3 gigabytes, which and, is a really good And thing. so what will happen though, say if, if, so if it's recognizing that this is the drum kit that you're using on 3 quarters of the song, and then you said, oh, I'm going to add another tom to it, and if that tom is playing live, you'll hear it load for a second, right? Yeah, yeah. So you'll actually hear a little glitch, it'll kind of be, it'll spit for and literally like a couple of seconds. Yeah. It'll be, what's that? But it's just the, that extra drum loading. Yeah. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Fear okay. not. Yeah. Okay. So that's the cash mode. All right. Uh, then you obviously have uh, the the clear and load. Clear clears the RAM. Load loads it into RAM again, yeah, if you would need that. And then the easy mixer. The easy mixer. You have actually next to the easy mixer you have an arrow, as you can see here. If you go there, you have all the the actual presets that either that you did yourself, which is the user presets, or you have. Um, you use the presets down here, or you have the ones that we uh, supply with the program. Uh, so uh, it's different from actually loading a combined preset because this is only loading the mixer part of it, not the bleeding. We're going to go through everything later, but uh, so there's a difference between bleed, mixer, right. drum kit. There's a lot of options. Right. Um, so. And in the Easy Mixer window, you have a fader for each microphone. So you can select the microphone here. So Wait. kick in, for example. Mm -hmm. You can solo the kick microphone, uh, mute it, face reverse it. Uh, you can do ambience correction on it, uh, on only that microphone. You can fade the microphone, not, not the actual uh, instrument. You can fade the microphone. And these um, are all very advanced features. Like most people won't use these a lot, but people that really want to get particular, you have the options in it. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of the yeah. program is that if you, you can get as deep into it as you want to, or yeah. you can just load it and go. Yeah. What is know? fading the microphone? Is it yeah, or is that's, it fading on a mixer? Exactly. Fading a microphone is fading every sound that comes through the microphone shorter. I see. Uh, and, and we're going to go through the fading feature when we go into the real mixer. For, so for you that are interested in that, we, okay. we're going to definitely talk about the, the, go into the depth of, of everything of right. these controls. So the easy mix is just to get the control really fast. Right. And what it means, I'm going to explain a, a bit later. Uh, then we have the volume. master volume. It's just for controlling the master volume of the, the output of the sampler. So Of the entire kit, actually, right? Is it for, for the entire kit? 
Yeah, right. it's yeah. it's for the entire sampler. Right. So is that default to zero? It's default it at different uh, different uh, values depending on the library. I see. Some libraries are recorded hotter than others. Got so you. We're we're trying to have all the libraries. You compensated in the, yeah. the program. Okay. That's great. Uh, velocity control. Uh, you can select the MIDI curves. Um, then we have the instrument section, and uh, this is where you actually choose the instruments you want to listen to, or control by all the, the the controls that we have. So, for example, I go down the list. I can choose, for example, the snare. Now and I you see that, and also you see that now the snare is mm -hmm. highlighted. Highlighted. Right. Yeah. Blue. And this is a dynamic pad. This is a dynamic to... pad, and I can. Hit it right. softer, and you know, depending on where I am in the pad. Right. I have a volume for the instrument. Uh huh. So that's different from the actual microphone. Okay. That's important to understand. And does this volume affect the mixer output on no. the fader? Okay. It, it it affects that fader affects the instrument in all the microphones. Okay. So say you you think that. So it's a master fader for that particular. For that drum, instrument. For that instrument. Right. But you can go even deeper. I can even make it an instrument. So let's say I, I, I think the side stick of the snare is too low. Right. So I can go in and select the side stick here. And then I, add, I, I push the button edit articulation only. Now I'm going to edit the side stick only. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to raise the volume of the side stick, but mm -hmm. not the rest of the drum in mm -hmm. all the microphones. So that's, that's what that's useful for. And can you do that while the kid is playing? Yeah, sure, definitely. And um, again, so, these are options that a lot of people right. may not want to ever use. Right, you're but, getting under the hood a little bit. But the fact that you can have that yeah. and get into that kind Complete of depth, control, you know, yeah. Especially like if you're using it for drum replacement right. and you really need to make sure that right. all your dynamics are correct with the real drummer that you're replacing, basically. Right. So to be able to have those kind of options is something that it's it's crucial, makes the program yeah. stand alone. You know. Then you have something called key. Here you have for for the side stick, it's on number uh, key number 37 and 127, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just to see where it's mapped to. On a keyboard. On so a that's, keyboard. The, oh, okay. that's the MIDI note number. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the remove is to remove the the chosen key. The learn is to actually. Let's say I have a pad like this one I have here, the Korg, and I play, this is a tom playing. But let's say I want to have this note number going to the snare edge. I hit learn, and the next time I hit something, the income, next incoming MIDI will learn that. So now I, I hit the snare. So now the MIDI note number that's, you know, that was associated with the tom, I think right. it was, is yeah. now for the snare. Great. Yeah. So you can do very, cool. very so easy remapping that way. Right. Very nice. And, um, okay, so the humanize section is uh, something where you can actually use, rarely use this unless you really want to go deep into once again, but it's um, getting it sound more real, like random notes, for example, like you have the uh, random notes, um, so you have many, many hits uh, sampled on the snare. On the hard hits, maybe you, you have a lot of hits. And, and random makes it all random, not in a sequence. Mm -hmm. So Random uh, velocities? Well, they're actually the random samples. So depending upon what, what you have it set to, you can have it set to what? Between 10 and 15, up to 15 consecutive different hits, right? Yeah. And that's what makes it sound real as opposed right. to the shotgun sample right. effect. But you can either have that that order sequential so it's always the same yeah. uh, samples sequence. that are firing within that 15 or 10 cool. you know, sequ sequential order right. or that it'll just randomize right. so you may get the same hit th third time around nice. and then the sixth time around. Right. So it just it makes it more human in that way. Cool. You know? yeah. Because every hit does is sure. slightly different because yeah. that's the way we And one we thing that's hip it. about this particular program is that the samples don't repeat that often, exactly. right? They, they exactly. go through a whole they sequence of do. samples before... They'll, they they never repeat one after the other. Right, that's but the they, beauty they, of the there's like at least six or seven samples between repeats, is that correct? If not more, it depending depends. on what it's set it for. It depends. Like right. What's it set for right now in it's the default? It's six. It's set for it's six here. But sometimes, right. you know, sometimes 20. we don't have that many. Right. Sometimes samples. it might be two. Right. And then if we have two, then we have a setting called CME sequence. So if we have two hits, it's going to actually take the third hit from a, a hit above that and, and lower the volume of that. Really? So, so we have stuff like that going as well. That's why it's, uh, you can do press rolls and all yeah. that stuff and it's that's always... It and real. as you yeah. see, we have the alternate and the alternate is alternate between right and left. So oh. for example, the new Metal Foundry library that we have, it's alternating between right and left kick, for example. 
That's so cool. Yeah. Well to wall is, is the ability for the samples to have a... Uh, uh, between two samples, there is a difference in volume, of course. Right. And the volume is maybe a bit... Um, dramatic. Dramatic. So well to wall makes it more smooth. Okay. That's what it makes. Um, and the soft well is, is to make the first hit softer. So uh -huh. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. <laughs> That's some deep stuff. Yeah, I mean, again, stuff. these are not m most people probably won't even right. ever get involved in that. But right. for the guys that want to get involved, right, in that, got complete again, control they have over those the options. That's yeah. exactly. And then we have. Uh, and so I see you can tune the kit. Yeah, individually exactly. or I'm globally. Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a loop, whatever. Um, okay. So now I'm I'm, I'm selecting the, the snare drum by right clicking. By right clicking the snare drum, and uh, um, so let's go. Let's do you want to do with the pitchers? Yes, yeah. do the pitch. So you, the second you hit the pitch knob, now because he's selected the snare drum, the pitch will only affect the snare drum. And the cool thing about it is that the pitch of the snare is changing in the room as well, yeah. but the pitch of the rest of the drums is still yeah. consistent. So, so that's pretty amazing. That's where it's like the hyper that's, reality, that's but that could never happen in right in the universe as we know it at least. Maybe Wish. a parallel universe. <laughs> I want to go there. Superior in parallel universe. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pitching. I, I can do gr dramatic, of course. I can also select the whole drum kit, play around with. Instant drum and bass right there. So now when I've done that, I can also go to the envelope. And if I do that, I can of course make everything shorter. Globally, the entire kit. Yeah, globally. Right. Or individually. Because also, he's got the whole kit yeah, selected right fantastic. now. I can also... Uh, and is there a quick way to return to the normal kit, that untuned, if you, if oh, you click on yeah, something sure, here? Sure, sure. To go just, right back just to the... Just reset there uh, and reset. just turn it off. You know, very well, easy. What were you showing right here in the, yeah. the attack? That was yeah, the, the attack. Yeah, so I can make it shorter, but I can also drag the attack. Soften it backwards. Yeah, so it feels like backwards. Yeah. That's the modern sound and of you today. Can, and you can <laughs> and you can also save a preset. Let's say save, save this preset. Right. Save as my envelope special. Right. And that's right. saving any, and any, now, any stuff we've done in the window at that that's time? That's saving just, just the envelope, envelope window, yeah. Okay. So now I'm turning off the envelope, I reset it, uh, I go to the snare drum, and I select my preset. Right. Use the preset, my envelope special. Right. So, so I quickly can save and do pieces like that. It, so with the, uh, okay, that's great. Reset. Um, that's cool. And up here you have the, uh, I'm gonna turn off the loop. Um, up here you have a picture of the actual drum shows and that's just the information for you. You can see that right. this is a 14 by 24 inch GMS, mm -hmm. uh, double headed. Um, but that's a double purpose window, right? Because if you drag an extra drum in, that extra drum yeah, yeah. will show not in the kit will show there. Yeah, we have X drums. Uh, so X drums is the actual uh, extra drums. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of, we well say, named. For, for me, this is like saving the best for last because yeah. You can bring in other drum kits or just single drums from other libraries, from other studios. So you can start combining. Again, this is where the program goes into hyper reality because you can't combine studios and real drum kits. Right. You're only working in one studio at a time. Yeah, that's that's a some, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is where, so, you know, and the library is pretty extensive now. So from, you know, we have Avatar here and we can bring in... A, let's a, let's do an easy, easy exp example. We're going to go yeah. into deeper into the X-Rounds because obviously they are very... Uh, <laughs> yeah, expansive. You can do a lot of things with them. Mm. But an easy example, we have Avatar here. Mm -hmm. We play with sticks in Avatar. Let's create an x uh where we go to Avatar, the uh, Avatar library, and we choose a snare drum but we play it with brushes instead. Mm. And then I go to the MIDI tab and I steal the MIDI from the default snare. So now when I play... It's move, overlaying. It's playing... It's replacing the other snare. Yes. It's can you layer it on top yeah, of the I other can. snare? Yeah, I can. That's one of the things we're going to show later. Okay. Uh, but so now I actually play brushes on the snare, but the rest of the kit is, is, is sticks. So there's a new feature um, in the in the plugin that allows you to change the mic placement for really uh, uh, 
best term I can think of, where essentially you can either delay or make closer with the mic position to the drum. So you can either add pre-delay to it, so you could have the actual effect of the room happen later, or you can have the effect of the room happen much closer to the, the close hits, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, We could do that before, but just in the ambience mics. Right. So yeah, that was just, that was called ambience correction before, amp core, but that, that's gonna change now to, I think it's gonna be called mic core. We, we're doing this tutorial before this was even out, so. And but I think it's mic correction. And this correction's oh. available for all microphones, including close mics? Because you probably wouldn't do it on the close mics on the kit. You right? can. That's cool about it. But does the it. tonality I mean, you can, change? If you do that, I mean, let's like, try it. Let's yeah. try it. Let's, wow. Let's, let's use it on this snare. Do you get proximity effect? Like if you're moving the mic closer to the drum, like you would in, in real life. I mean, let's let's use it on something. Let's just let's try it out. I mean, if I play. I'm interested. You think it changed the phase though that we worked so hard to totally. get right? Totally. Oh, I thought it was only referring to the drum mic though. Yeah. That's good. Ish, I guess it works. We worked so hard. So where are you doing? Yeah. Anna? So I'm moving it ten minutes seconds now. So you hear the attack disappearing from the snap top microphone. That's more attack. Less attack. Wow. You Check know, the so phase with something else. Can we hear like the, the phase through the high, the, the snare coming through the high yeah, hat? Let's, and see let's what that's do the, the overhead. But yeah. I guess it's just moving in. Let's do the overhead. Let's, let's, let's go back to snare top. Let's go to overhead and change that. It's just like how you thought the tuning thing, right? Remember? Right. It's like it works, so. So it's actually changing. The face is changing when I do this. Yes, yeah, you're right. So you know that's that's a part of this thing. This feature is because you can actually, I mean, you can bounce these files in any. Though I mean, we're obviously gonna do, we're we're definitely gonna do presets where where uh, we do like a face alignment thing. So we can we can bounce and we can see. Okay, so the. Ambience far mic is 10.2 milliseconds away from the actual close mic. So we can do stuff like that and just make it aligned time-wise to have it closer to the kit and tighter and everything. Just to be, I mean, that's a cool thing. I mean, it is. To be able I mean, to I can do. see doing it with ambience. I'm not sure about the close mic thing. Of it course, sounds but dangerous, I mean, but. Then, and then yeah. for the close mic, you can do it as sort of an effect. Right, right. So that's right. the idea. I mean, we'll see what Interesting. happens. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 